Welcome to Health Beat. I'm Judy Marie, and today we're talking about gambling and some community resources. My guests today are Holly Chant, health promoter with the Northwestern Health Unit, and Leah Green, research analyst for the NAL program for CAMH, which stands for Center for Addiction and Mental Health. Hi, Holly. Hi, Lee. Hi. Hi Welcome to Health Beat. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Maybe we can start the show off, Holly, with you telling us a little bit about the work that you do and why the health unit's involved in gambling. Sure. So like you said, I'm a health promoter at the Northwestern Health Unit, and I'm the lead for mental health promotion on our chronic disease prevention team, and that includes uh, the topic of gambling prevention. So <clears throat> I do some topic-specific work um, around mental health promotion and gambling, like I said. So um, things like developing presentations, um, doing messaging for our social media platforms, um, any kind of content for those topics I would be responsible for. And then I also do a lot of community work um, in my local community, which is Suneros and Nestor Falls. So things like going into schools and doing presentations and working with community members and whatnot. And so the health unit got involved in uh, gambling prevention work um, because of the news a while back that uh, there was a casino uh, supposed to be coming to Kenora. Um, <clears throat> the health unit was asked to work together with uh, community partners uh, to prevent an increase in problem gambling that would be anticipated with the development of the casino. Um, gambling is a public health issue uh, because of its link to problem gambling. So it's associated with a range of negative impacts um, on physical and uh, mental health, um, including ill health, fatigue, uh, substance use and addiction, um, and depression and suicide, um, among others. Um, our rates of suicide and self-harm are really high uh, in our area, um, <clears throat> along uh, with rates of substance use and other mental and behavioral disorders. I mean, the health unit does a lot of population health messaging, so we're kind of in a perfect uh, position to get the messaging and education out there about gambling prevention. And Lee, can you share with our viewers a little bit about your role and your organization's work? Sure. So I'm a research analyst with CAMH, which stands for Center for Addiction and Mental Health, as you mentioned. Um, CAMH is a big um, teaching and research hospital based in Toronto, uh, but they also support um, provincial level programs and initiatives through what's called the Provincial Systems Support Program, so or PSSP. So we have a PSSP office here in Kenora, uh, which I've been working out of, uh, um, doing the research component of the NOW program, which is essentially a problem gambling prevention program. Um, so I've just been carrying out um, mainly the research uh, on the ground recruiting people and administering the survey and um, looking at the survey results. Let's talk a little bit about gambling and uh, the goal of our show is to inform our viewers on the topic. So let's just have a general conversation and both of you please feel free to jump in. But I'm wondering, um, is gambling a concern in our area and how do we compare to other areas with the rates of gambling? Um, well, we, we got a lot of data on um, gambling in our area in general. Um, so we, we got to note that there's a difference between gambling and problem gambling. So the majority of people that we surveyed, we, sur we surveyed 819 people, um, identified gambling in some form at least once during the past year. So over 90% people of people in our area do gamble. Um, that's not necessarily casino gambling. Um, only about 30% of people um, said that they had gambled at a casino in the past year. Um, and just for comparison's sake, so 90% locally in Kenora, or the, re the region. The region, right? yeah. Um, so for Ontario, it's 80%. So our neck of the woods is a little bit higher. It's hard to find region-specific um, gambling rates and problem gambling rates. Um, we have a national and provincial information, which, which shows around um, 1 to 2% um, of problem gambling rates, but that varies from province to province and from region to region. So um, our problem gambling rates were a little bit high in our sample, um, but that's not necessarily saying that, um, that our that the entire region has higher problem gambling rates because we did <coughs> intentionally oversample groups that we know are at kind of higher risk for problem gambling. So those uh, higher problem gambling rates aren't necessarily super surprising for us. Mm -hmm. 
but what are some of the things that we should look <coughs> for that help define when gambling becomes a problem like how do you know when it is a problem sure so there are different things that you can um, look for um, so if uh, if the person stops doing uh, certain things that they previously enjoyed um, if they start missing family events um, changes in patterns of sleep or eating, things like that, um, if they start using alcohol and drugs more often, um, and you know any kind of uh, uh, like neglect behavior, so neglecting themselves as far as self-care, missing work, um, uh, missing family obligations, um, neglecting children as well. You know, you might you know, leave your child alone more often, or you don't really care who is watching your children. Um, and, and two, it could even lead to um, uh, major depression um, and, and sometimes suicide, as we talked about mm -hmm. uh, a little bit earlier. So it sounds like gambling has a huge impact, uh, more than just financial, and can impact on families and friends and that around as well. Absolutely. So this is great that we're getting the word out. What are some of the factors that would make a person more vulnerable to developing problem gambling? Right, so there are some uh, uh, populations that are um, disproportionately, um, <clears throat> pardon me, um, affected. So um, males, uh, youth, um, older adults, um, indigenous people, and uh, those that, um, individuals and families with low incomes. Um, are at um, a higher risk for developing problem gambling. Okay, mm -hmm. and does that fit with what? Yeah, so there's there's a lot of things that could potentially be risk factors, but it's kind of complicated relationships. So um, if if you're interested in knowing more of the risk factors, you can find like a, a detailed list of them on uh, problemgambling.ca. It's a mm -hmm. website. It's got a lot of good information on risk factors, what to look for, what's pro what's uh, responsible gambling versus what's problem gambling, um, how to dif differentiate between the two. So we were talking about the casino, but gambling can be so much more than just a casino. What about maybe just briefly online, pull tickets, anything else, other forms that Yeah, absolutely. And I think a lot of people too don't understand that things like that, pull tickets, um, uh, scratch tickets, bingo, um, just playing the lottery, like those are all forms of gambling, mm -hmm. um, as well as, you know, casino and slot machines and, you know, online betting and sports betting and, you know, card tables and, and, and whatnot. So it sounds like awareness and prevention is key. Definitely. Thank you for joining us for Health Beat. We'll be back after this short break. Welcome back to Health Beat. Today I'm talking with Holly Chant, health promoter at the Northwestern Health Unit, and Leah Green from CAMH, and we're talking about gambling. Welcome back to the show. Thank you. Thanks. I was just thinking during the break, and I was wondering, because we've been talking about the casino coming to Kenora, uh, what do you think might be some of the impacts of having the casino here in Kenora? Yeah, so um, increased access to uh, gambling venues is, is linked to increased problem gambling, uh, which in turn is linked to increases in adverse health outcomes. Um, so um, some of the impacts could, uh, could be um, increases in already high rates of uh, negative health outcomes like suicide and self-harm. Um, mental health problems could increase, um, as well as substance misuse. Um, and not only does um, problem gambling affect the individual, but impacts their family as well. So things like uh, greater financial issues, um, l neglecting personal responsibilities like we talked about earlier, um, neglecting children, um, et cetera. I mean, it also has considerable effects uh, on the broader community. Uh, so things like job loss, um, reduced work productivity, um, unemployment, social assistance benefits, um, things like increased healthcare costs, um, things like crime and policing um, as well, um, court costs, legal fees, all of those things can, uh, can be impacts from uh, increased gambling. And I understand you had mentioned the NOW study, Leah, that uh, work is being done proactively to gather some evidence and uh, through the research to plan proactively 
for when the casino comes to Kenora. Can you share it with us a little bit about what is the NOW study and uh, some of the details? Yeah, so the NOW project, it stands for the Northwestern Ontario Wellness Gambling Response Project. And it's really a collaboration of a, a number of different uh, partners who, and the intent is to prevent problem gambling while maximizing the benefits of the casino coming to our area. So there are benefits like economically, um, but we just want to proactively um, kind of prevent any foreseeable harms that we could anticipate in advance. So that's what we've been doing with this study. So a major component of it has been uh, the research project that I've been working on it, working on. So it's kind of the first step. Um, but it's, it's community-based prevention and treatment. So we're, we're drawing from the research data that we now have um, to feed that into prevention, promotion, and treatment efforts um, in advance. So um, the intention is for the project to be longitudinal. So we just finished up our first wave of data collection. We got 819 participants wow. from across the region. Um, Kenora and Rainy River districts was kind of our, our region because we anticipate people are going to be traveling in to visit the casino, right? So we wanted to get a, um, an idea of people's gambling knowledge, gambling behavior, attitudes, beliefs, and also kind of some brief screamer, screeners of mental health in our area. Um, and so we asked people kind of what the anticipate what they anticipated the impacts of the casino were mm. going to be, and we got a lot of positive and negative, right? So people are kind of excited to have another recreational opportunity, bring in tourism, um, something for people to do, help with tax dollars and the economy, stuff like that. But the biggest concern, obviously, is the things that uh, Holly mentioned was the negative problem gambling impacts it can have on families and the community. So. Um, the next steps are to take this research that we, we just finished up our draft final report. Mm -hmm. We have a big meeting next week to present mm -hmm. it to the community, um, all the frontline community partners who um, will be helping people who may have problem gambling. So present this information to them um, and kind of come up with some next steps on how we can um, prepare in advance to help support anyone who may develop problems with their gambling in the future. So it sounds like this information, which is local to Northwestern Ontario, will be useful for individuals and a lot for the partner organizations as they develop their plans and help support any work that needs to be done around the area with problem gambling. So that's really exciting. Yeah, that's the hope is that the, the results from the survey and the research will be used by the community partners. It's, a, it's been a community-based uh, prevention treatment effort from the beginning. Um, uh, community partners have guided like the research questions, what sorts of things should we be asking people, what information do we want to know um, so that they can make use of it in their own work. Just as a point of interest, what's the response been to people who were invited to participate? You know, it's not very often that you get a chance to have your opinion or have something on the front end like that. Has it been positive from the people that have participated? Yeah, we got, we, our target number of participants was 600 um, and we got 819. So we had a good response. Um, we kind of oversampled groups that we know to be at higher risk. So um, young adults is a group that we were particularly mm -hmm. interested in. Um, older adults, so age 65 plus, is another higher risk group. And also um, people who are receiving um, health or mental health treatment on a regular basis are actually at higher risk for problem gambling. So that was one of the groups that we um, specifically looked at. So um, we got some good response. Um, and we're hoping to resurvey these same 819 people after the casino gets here, for example, and we want to be tracking changes over time, which is so the we're overall. So at more of a longitudinal study rather than just a snapshot in time. That's right. And Holly, do you feel that this information will be useful as you start developing plans regionally? Yeah, absolutely. And we've already um, <clears throat> used some of the, uh, some of the earlier um, data. Uh, that CAMH has collected through the study um, for as part of um, uh, 
uh, <clears throat> a multi-year campaign that the health unit has been running. Mm -hmm. um, so we were able to get um, some funding uh, through uh, GRIO, uh, so the Gambling Research and Exchange Ontario, um, to develop uh, a campaign, um, a year-long campaign, but the health unit is hoping to continue it past that. The funding has ended now. Mm -hmm. um, so what we were able to do is we worked with uh, CAMH and several other uh, partners in the community to put together this campaign just to provide messaging and education to people about um, uh, problem gambling and responsible gambling. Mm -hmm. So we developed a bunch of print material, um, posters, we had radio ads, um, just um, expressing to people that you know gambling um, is is a recreational activity and it and it can be fun so the tagline we had was keep it fun mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. but we also want people to be aware that there are um, risks um, you know health risks um, and other risks associated with with gambling as well and this is really exciting because I think it's a really great example about how you know frontline research and partnerships that you can work together in the community in a proactive way using the evidence and recognizing that there are benefits and there are issues that you need to come up with strategies to help mitigate whenever there's a change within the community so this is really exciting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I guess one of the next things that I would like to talk about is when people's gambling is out of control or when they have problem gambling, is this something that people would generally try to hide? Um, so, um, so most people with uh, gambling problems um, say that they, they lost control over how much time and money they spend gambling um, and they you know, meanwhile, they've ignored, you know, personal responsibilities. Um, they knew they had problems, so they were aware, but the gambling just seemed more important. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's what their focus was. Okay. So I think they're aware, but the, the need to gamble just takes over. Okay, and we'll come back with more of Health Beat after this short break. Please stay tuned for more of Health Beat. We're just going to take a short break. Thank you for joining us for more of Health Beat. Today my guest is Holly Chant with the Northwestern Health Unit and Leah Green from CAMH and we're talking about gambling. And already we've looked at gambling uh, and some of the work that's being done in preparation to help build prevention and treatment supports using research in our area. I'd just like to follow up with uh, where we left off prior to the break talking about people's awareness of gambling and seeking support and you had mentioned something interesting on the break that you found out from your research that you want to share. Yeah, it surprised me. We asked a question in our survey um, if people have thought that they've had a mental health or addiction or gambling problem in the past but didn't seek out help for it, what was the reason for not seeking out help? because um, we were trying to identify some barriers to service so that uh, service providers could uh, address those barriers. And uh, when we specifically looked at the problem gambling group, so the 7% um, of people who showed signs of problem gambling, um, the number one barrier that they identified was that they didn't know that they had a problem, mm -hmm. um, followed by they didn't know the problem was that bad, they were, had concerns about their privacy and confidentiality, um, and they thought they needed to do, they thought they knew what they needed to do without necessarily going for professional help. So those are some interesting findings from our survey that surprised me. Mm -hmm. And that's really great information to know and to share with our, with our viewers. I'd like to talk a little bit more now about supports. Is there much support available for people who maybe have problem gambling? So we have a lot of great um, mental health and addiction service providers in Kenora. Um, I think a lot of times it can feel overwhelming for people trying to navigate which, um, which program or service provider to go to because they don't know like if they're eligible or what programs are available. So um, what I would recommend as a first step would be to contact what's called Connects Ontario which is uh, you can contact them by phone or um, go to their website and they have a chat function too. Mm. Um, 
So you call them and they have people that are service navigation specialists and they help you, they listen to you, they figure out what kind of help you're looking for and um, look at services in your area and try and come up with a plan with you uh, to try and help you navigate all the different services that are available. Um, so that's a good resource for people to use if they don't know about it already. Because mm -hmm. sometimes when there's multiple services within the community, it's hard to know which one to reach out to. So that's, right. that's a really great service mm -hmm. for our viewers to know about. One of the questions I have is, if you have concerns about somebody that you think might have problem gambling, what's the best way to approach that? Like, what would you say to somebody? Well, and I think it's tricky. It's a tricky situation uh, because, like you had alluded to earlier from the study, um, that people feel they didn't have a problem or didn't know, right? Um, but I always think, like, if you have concerns about a family member um, or a friend, um, just just talk to them. Um, it's, I think it's better to ha actually have the discussion and ask the question um, and to educate yourself on what the signs and symptoms of problem gambling are mm -hmm. so that you're aware and if you see things like that then you're like oh okay maybe I need to have a conversation with this person. Um, and two it's really important too to find out um, where the support services are and where mm -hmm. you can go for help as well. And so say if you had a concern about someone and you were looking for help for yourself, maybe it's a family member or a friend, could you reach out to these support services as well to access support for yourself? Yeah, yeah, um, you could. Um, so on the, the website that I mentioned, yeah. problemgambling.ca, there's a section for if you think you yourself have uh, developed problem gambling. Um, there's also a section for loved ones um, what oh, what excellent. do you do in that situation so so whether you identify yourself as having gambling that's a problem or you're involved with a friend or family member there is lots of support out there so that's really great information I'm going to ask you a question now that probably everybody's wondering about um, any latest updates about the casino in Kenora <laughs> Um, well, it, and Leah might be able to share a little bit more, but we, we are having um, a, a, the big meeting next week, uh, the NOW Forum, um, and there's usually representation from uh, the casino owners mm -hmm. at uh, that meeting. They usually do share some kind of an update, um, but I, Leah might know more than I do. Yeah, that's right. So we are expecting Gateway to be at our meeting next week. Mm -hmm. Gateway is the service provider, the casino service provider. So. Um, they, we, we don't have any updates as of yet, but they may be updating us on Tuesday as to where they're at um, with their development plans. So stay tuned. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. <laughs> okay. I'm just thinking now, if you were to key some messages that you thought were, were key messages that you'd like our, our viewers to know, just to summarize, do you want to just share a few key messages with us? Yeah, so uh, my top three would probably be, like I said before, make sure that um, you yourself are educated um, and that your family and friends are educated on the signs and symptoms mm -hmm. of problem gambling. Um, also too, if you do, if you yourself, if you gamble uh, recreationally, um, educate yourself on how to gamble responsibly um, so things like setting, you know, money and time limits. Um, uh, don't think of gambling as a way to make money. Mm -hmm. um, uh, those kinds of those kinds of things. And if you actually go to the Northwestern Health Unit website, we do have um, a problem gambling uh, page, and um, there is some information on there about um, responsible gambling tips. And then also just make sure to find out where the supports are um, and how you can get help uh, for yourself or or others. And Leah, did you have anything you wanted to add to that? <laughs> Holly stole a couple Sorry. of them. <laughs> That's okay. It's always good to <laughs> reinforce the yeah, message. So. Uh, so education is key. So know yourself how to differentiate between responsible gambling and problem gambling. Um, also, I would say pay attention to the way you're thinking about gambling. So um, if you're framing it in your mind as kind of a recreational activity that you do on occasion as like another leisure option, um, then that's fine, but uh, if you start thinking of it as either a way to make money or um, 
as a way to cope with or escape from life stresses or kind of negative emotional states, um, then that's when it can become more risky. So pay attention to why you want to gamble. Um, and also, like Holly said, um, set set limits and stick to them. So mm -hmm. spending limits and time limits in advance of going gambling is um, key. Um, I think that's it, yeah. Well, I think those are some great tips. And Holly and Leah, I wanna thank you very much for joining me on Health Beat today. We've covered a lot of material and hopefully this will be good information and useful to our viewers. And uh, we'll encourage people to watch the show. Thank you. Thank you so much for having us. This wraps up this episode of Health Beat. Gambling, whether it's problem or non-problem, the key is to be informed and know the signs, when to be concerned and where to reach out. And we will be posting links at the end of the show. I want to thank you very much for joining us on this episode of Health Beat and see you next time.